whichever date format we want to have apply within our Windows applications. Okay. And again, remember that once you've set it up here within the control panel, your Windows applications will pick up the date format from within here. All right. Okay. So this is pretty important you go through and do this early on. Yeah, very important, in fact. Um, so you can see there are a number of different options that we could go into mm -hmm. to actually customize our date. Um, the next one that we have here is time format. Well, once we've set the time correctly using mm -hmm. the date and time, we may want to have a 12 or a 24 hour clock. You can change the separator from a, a colon mm -hmm. to perhaps a, a comma or whatever you want to have there. Sure. Okay, so that's the next area. Currency, very important here. Um, click on the down arrow and you can see the various ways that we could display the currency. Again, we'll see this change a bit later on when we change something else with an international. Mm -hmm. So that's just uh, that piece there. Yep. Then number format, again, um, which separators you want to use. Yes, because some people like a comma after the Some people do, standard. yes. Yes, so you would go in here and actually select um, to, to change that here. And again, all of this is carried across all your Windows applications. Yeah. Now, um, if we go to the top of the dialog box, you can see that we have a country option. Mm -hmm. Now, if I change the country from UK to perhaps uh, United States, Notice what happens down here. Oh, yes. We've now changed dollars. from the pounds, yes, mm. to dollars. Um, and also, we have my date format change. So we now have the month mm -hmm. followed by the day, then the year. So whatever changes we make here will automatically affect these four options down here. Okay. Which, which sort of makes sense, really. Probably is good if you, if you have a notebook and you're running Windows on a notebook and you travel a lot. You might want to set it up yeah, in the country you're yeah, going to. Yeah, that's right. Um, so that, that's the country option. Now, if we were to change language and keyboard, mm -hmm. okay, um, what will happen here is that Windows will prompt us to enter in um, a floppy disk what are we from doing? Your, we, your Windows setup. Can we change this to another language? Well, we're actually configuring, for example, we take the keyboard, that's probably the most um, mm -hmm. easiest one to explain here. Um, if I was to change the keyboard from British to French, yep. Okay, that will allow me then uh, to have um, the circumflex, the accents, and all of the special symbols and characters yes. that we would use within the French language. And they would be on the standard keyboard then, would they? They would. Now, if we said OK at this point, it should prompt me, yes, here we are, it will prompt me to enter disk number two from my Windows setup disks. Okay. Um, because we're actually now making a fairly substantial change mm -hmm. to my Windows environment. We're actually changing hardware rather than just uh, a software driven type change. It's probably if you, if you are changing this, you may want to have your system administrator involved. I think so. Sure they keep the disks yes. for you. Yes, yes, because you could get into into yep. into a sticky situation here. Okay, and um, we've got a measurement. Measurement, yeah, whether you're uh, imperial or, or metric. Mm -hmm. um, so English or yes. imperial. And also list separator. Um, we've already touched on this slightly, but you may want to have a comma between thousands within a number, for mm -hmm. example, rather than a full stop. So this is where you would set up that, that uh, particular facility. Okay, so it just separates the numbers. Yes. Okay, we've, um, we've made the change to French, which we probably don't want to do, so how do we cancel? Okay, well if we just select cancel at this point, mm -hmm. any of the things we've selected will not be accepted. Okay, so we'll just click, click on cancel and back to our original settings. Okay, that was international. That was international. The next one we're going to look at is mouse. Um, now, Ooh, we're, using, we're using here on this system uh, the Microsoft mouse, and it's mm -hmm. the, the current version of the mouse. Um, which is ergonomically designed so mm -hmm. that uh, we, we feel very comfortable. And you can see there are a number of different things that we can do here. Um, we can set the color of our mouse pointer from white to black or indeed make it transparent. The, the people that are watching this video, are they all going to see this? Is this exactly what they were um, Only if they have this particular mouse installed. Um, they may have a previous version of, uh, of the mouse, mm -hmm. which will not give you such a variety. Okay. Um, so it may be slightly different, yeah. yes. Um, over here on the left, you can see that we can change the size of the mouse pointer. Again, quite useful, perhaps, um, if, if you have a, a, um, a disability in terms of, of looking at the screen or whatever, mm -hmm. you may want to increase the size of your mouse pointer there. Yeah. Now, um, at the bottom here, mouse trails, this actually isn't enabled because we have a, a color VGA 
uh, screen. Mm -hmm. If we had a monochrome LCD screen, that becomes very difficult for us to track the mouse. So here we can turn on trails, which means that as you move the mouse, it leaves a trail behind us so you can identify where the mouse is easily on the screen. Yeah, I've tried using a, a mouse on a, on a monochrome notebook oh, and it's uh, It nightmare. really is it's tough going, so mm. that's actually quite a useful tool. Um, OK. I um, can just cancel from that. So that people may see that, but they may see other yeah, information yeah. as well. There's one more thing I think that we should identify, um, Steve, within mouse, and that's if you're left or right-handed. OK. Um, if we go into orientation... Ah. Here you can choose to, to set the buttons uh, for left or, or right-handed people. And that, again, is very important because okay, you're using the useful. mouse on a regular basis yep. and you may feel more comfortable if the buttons were, were swapped around. Okay. Just be careful, actually. A, a friend at work <laughs> may play a little trick on you and swap your mouse buttons around. You come into work the next day and you're busily trying to select with the left button using the mouse and you're thinking, good gracious, what's going on here? Yeah. And uh, then suddenly... You realise that somebody's come along and swapped your buttons over oh, overnight. Oh dear, yeah. I think that's a problem. Somebody once stole the ball out of my mouse. Oh really? <laughs> They're not, not much good without a ball. <laughs> I think we actually delivered a load of mice once, actually years ago, with no balls in them, which gave quite a few problems to people. Makes, it makes life a little yes. bit interesting, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> OK, um, let's move on to, to um, something else in more detail. Let's look at printers. Mm -hmm. Again, very crucial within the Windows environment if you're to, uh, to actually output your data. Within this dialog box here, you can see a number of things. First of all, we can see that our default printer is this Apple Laser Writer. Yep. And that's currently connected to our uh, communication port LPT1. Sounds a bit technical. We saw the ports earlier, remember? It's just a bit on the back of the computer. That's right. To. It's just a, a plug on the back of your computer. Okay. But, as well as using that printer, we also have a couple more printer drivers installed. Mm. Um, we have a LaserJet 3 SI and we also have a QMS colour printer. Well, they're starting to appear more and more with the colour printers, aren't oh, they? Oh, yes, absolutely. And, and they're priced now that, you know, they're, they're very affordable indeed. Mm. Um, so our Apple is the, the default printer. We may want to change that and perhaps choose that as our default printer. And again, what this means is that our Windows applications will pick that up as the printer that they print out to. Right. Okay. If, you, if I connect a relatively strange printer that's not a fairly common one, how do I call that up? Right. Um, well, let's look at adding a printer, shall we? Mm -hmm. um, if we choose Add, you can see here that uh, we have a number of printers. Let's just bring that up slightly. We have a number of printers listed. And in fact, with Windows, uh, we ship in excess of 300 wow. different printer drivers. Remember, drivers, drivers are the things that enable our applications to yeah. talk to a printer. The bit of software, isn't the it? The bit of software. Yeah. Um, so let's say that we wanted to install uh, a, a Kyocera mm -hmm. printer here, OK? We'd select the Install option. Yeah. And again, Windows will prompt us to enter the relevant setup disk with the printer driver Oh, on that okay. disk. So the ones we see in the list there are already set up and ready to go. They're, they're set up in the list ready to go, but if we select a printer from Add Printer, mm -hmm. then we need to install the floppy disk and right. then copy the driver across. Yeah. And this is, in fact, what we did yesterday when we were setting up the system to install those printers there. Are all the, uh, all the printers available? Do we have drivers included in Windows for those? Um, no. If we were to go out tomorrow mm -hmm. and purchase uh, a brand new printer that had just recently come onto the market, mm -hmm. um, it's unlikely that driver would be shipped with Windows because it takes some time for the manufacturers yep. to get the driver to Microsoft and unless we revise Windows, it mm -hmm. can't be included. So what happens there in that scenario is that the printer manufacturers will include the driver with the, the printer itself and you would just select this option here yeah. and it would then allow you to insert the floppy disk for your new printer that you've just purchased. OK. OK. And I can see a little button there which says Use Print Manager. OK. Um, well, Print Manager is an option within Windows, and basically it's a tool that allows you to control mm -hmm. the, the print jobs that are going down to your printer. Oh, I see. So once you've selected print from mm -hmm. an application, it gets sent down to the print manager. OK. And the print manager holds that job until such time as the printer is ready to, to actually receive and print out for you. Mm -hmm. As well as adding printers, we can remove printers. OK, yep. so we might want to remove that particular printer. It's given me a message there. Let's that say one. no. Yeah. That printer there, yeah, mm -hmm. let's say no. Um, and the setup is, is really just to configure 
um, the various paper trays that you have, whether it's portrait or landscape so or that's, whatever. So that's the setup for the Hewlett Packard LaserJet? That's right, yes. And uh, you will be able to set up every single printer that you have installed within Windows in exactly the oh, same way. OK, and you've got a lot of control over these, haven't you? A lot of control, yes. Good. So perhaps let's close out of that. Um, the last thing that we want to look at here actually sits within the main group, so we just need to close down the control panel. Um, and it's this here, window setup. Mm -hmm. So let's just take a look inside of there and see what we can do here. OK, uh, this is currently showing me the, the various uh, drivers that we have set up for our keyboard, our mouse, our display. And if we were on a network, mm -hmm. then you can see here we would have something appear in the network um, area. If we weren't on a network, it would just say no network installed. So it's the, it's the current setup and you could change it? Yeah. If we, for example, um, purchased a new screen and we wanted to change to that new screen, mm -hmm. we would go into the options settings here and say change system settings. And much in the same way as earlier on, we saw a list of the printer drivers oh, available. Right. These are the various screen drivers available to us. So display is your, your monitor? Display is the monitor, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we just choose the relevant display. And uh, again, we'll be prompted to enter in the floppy disk so that Windows could install that driver yep. onto our PC. Good. Um, okay. And again, I guess this is something the system administrator is going to... Yeah, to very much with. so. The other thing that um, is quite useful within here is the ability to add or remove the various Windows components. Now, again, um, a system administrator may do this for you, um, but basically what it means is that we can... Uh, save a bit of disk space, mm -hmm. if uh, that was a, at a premium, by removing various elements of Windows. And, and the sort of things that you could easily remove, perhaps without uh, too much concern, would be things like wallpapers, backdrops. Um, so currently, we can go into here, mm -hmm. and we can say, OK, do not install whichever wallpapers we don't want to have installed. And as I select that wallpaper... Oh, you've got install on that side, haven't you? That's right, yes. Yeah. So currently none of these will be installed, but you may just want to have a couple of wallpapers installed. What are the wallpapers exactly? The wallpapers um, are the things that we see on the desktop. Okay. So we saw the Windows logo earlier. Yes. Um, and that's, that's what we mean when we say wallpaper. Right. OK, so that's another useful area inside of there where you could save um, a bit of disk space. So you can turn it off over there in the box? Yeah. OK, and turn it back on again if and you need to. turn it back on. Fine. Yeah. Good. So we've got lots okay. of control. Lots of controls. Let's just close that down and uh, get back to where we were just a second ago. But I guess you know, you wouldn't really want to be playing around with that. You no. need to know what you're doing. You, you do need to know what you're doing, and um, that sort of thing is, is best left to the experts, <laughs> really. <laughs> yes, okay. yeah. Fine. Well, you've given us a, a good tour of what's available in Windows yeah. so far, and we've okay. seen a lot of the customization that's available. Yeah. In the next chapter, you're going to put on your crash helmet because <laughs> it's the test drive section where you yes. show us exactly what we can do with Windows. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so we'll speed on now and have a look at that section. Okay. we've seen that Windows seems to have a lot of depth, mm. a lot of things in there. There is an awful lot within there, Steve, and I think um, it's important to mention to people watching the video, we can't cover absolutely everything mm -hmm. within Windows today. Um, but what we're trying to do here is to pull out the important mm -hmm. parts and elements of Windows to, to get people up and running right. and, and get a usable system, basically. Maybe we'll get you back for a more... Perhaps there's going to be part. a part two at some <laughs> point, yes. yeah. OK, well, this section is called Test Drive, and this mm -hmm. is where we get you just to dazzle us with science, I guess. Show us what it can do. Don't my crash helmet and off yes. we go. <laughs> okay, well, let's go. All right, on. let's go into the accessories group um, and pull out a few of the items here. First thing is the calculator. Very useful within Windows. If uh, you don't have a calculator to hand, you can use the, the calculator within Windows. Right. And uh, let's say that we want to calculate here um, what 17.5% of £99 would be. So get the VAT. Get the VAT, basically, yep. yeah. So I can use the numeric keyboard mm -hmm. and type in... 99, nine. Yep. use the star for the multiply. Yep. And then uh, 17.5. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just introduce the mouse at this point. Here's a, a percentage sign, so I can select that. Ah, and there it is. And there we have it. 17.325 um, pounds is. 17.5%. 79 pounds. 79 pounds, yes. Right. We just worked out the VAT on a soft vision video. <laughs> I well, knew well, there was an ulterior motive to uh, me doing that calculation. Saves me doing it. <laughs> um, if we go to the view menu here, 
Yep. We could also have a scientific Ooh. calculator. This is for the, the, the really clever people out for the, there. For the brave people. Oh, gosh. I mean, you can calculate cosines and sines and all sorts of things mm -hmm. here. Um, personally, I'm quite happy with the standard calculator. Uh, but then I'm not a real scientist, but uh, you've got both there. So it'll cater to sort of a yes. range of usage. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing to mention, because people will probably notice this, or at yeah. least the observant people, <laughs> uh, we don't have a file menu here no. on the calculator. Nor do you have the upward pointing arrow. That's right. Now, because with this particular tool we're not working with files, mm -hmm. um, it's not relevant to have a file menu. OK. So we will close the application by using the control menu. Right. Okay. There, it's gone. Right. So that's your little calculator. That's the calculator. Next thing, which is very useful, is the clock. So let's just uh, double click on the clock there. And there we have uh, the default clock as, as it's set up at the moment. Uh, we may want to change the way that the information is displayed on the clock. Mm -hmm. So if we go to the settings menu, we could first of all have an analog clock oh, there. Right. And again, we can size these, these windows as we've done yep. already. Um, let's perhaps set it back to digital. We may want to not want to have seconds unless we're really, really watching uh, our mm. time. And we may not want to have the date. OK. OK. And this time and date that we see, where is that coming from? That's coming from my system settings that we set up oh. earlier in date and time within the control panel. So if this wasn't right, you'd go back to your control panel and change it? To change it, that's right, yes. Now, one very useful thing about the clock um, is that uh, people like to have it minimised on the desktop, mm -hmm. so it's constantly there as a reminder as to, to how they're doing for time. <laughs> as a reminder as to when it's time to go Yes, home. yes, and uh, how much longer we have for this chapter in the video. So we can say always on top. Yeah. And if I then minimise the clock, um, let's perhaps bring the program manager down. I need to, to grab the title bar, actually, to do that. So let's bring program manager down. And you can see there that the clock is always on top. OK. No matter what applications we have open, it will yep. always sit on top, which is very, very useful indeed. Um, so we could, again, just move that perhaps to the bottom right-hand side of the screen. So even as an icon, it's keeping tabs on the time for you. Yeah, that's right. That's useful. So that's very useful. We'll leave that there, shall we? Um, and the next application that I'd like to look at within accessories is right. Again, we opened this early, so we had a brief glimpse of this, but mm -hmm. let's look at it in more detail. Just maximise right, and there's the clock, you yep. can see. Oh, yes, still, um, still faithfully coming up. It's still up. ticking away there. Yep. Um, as we said earlier, right is a very basic text editor, and uh, we already have a file prepared, or at least I hope I have. <laughs> um, it's this one here, Soft Vision, and the extension for write files is WRI. This is the, the, the bit that identifies the file, is it? That's right, yes. Now, just to mention here, Steve, that um, notice within this particular dialog box, we have a number of other files with WRI as extensions. Mm -hmm. These are also very useful files. They're, they're basically information files about the various elements of Windows. So if you want to find out more about networking or printers, then these are very useful files that are shipped with, within Windows. So if you're at a loose end on a Sunday afternoon, you might want yeah, to just yeah. print them out and read them. You want to have a quick read, yeah. yeah. So let's open up that soft vision file. Uh -huh. And you can see there that we've uh, just put some text in there. I did say earlier this is a very basic text editor. Let's just select my heading and we could go in and perhaps um, make that font italic, maybe reduce the font size a little bit as well. Right. So, so by you're no in means. Control of the text. Yeah, no, by no means a word processor, but just a very basic text editing tool. Uh -huh. Now, what I want to show here um, is how we could take information from one application and incorporate that into my write document. So, what I'm going to do at this point is minimise right, and we're going to open up Paintbrush. Whoops. Double click on that icon. Double click on the icon, and let's uh, maximise Paintbrush. And what I'm going to do here is open up an existing file, again one which is shipped with Windows. Uh, and the one that we're actually going to open up here is WinLogo. BMP. Yes, now we've got BMPs as, as opposed to WRIs now. BMP stands for Bitmap. Okay. Um, and do you remember in the background we have our Windows logo, the grey yes. picture? That is this particular file here, okay. winlogo.bmp. Mm -hmm. So let's open that up. And there you can see it. And what I want to do at this point is select the scissors and just cut some information out from here. So let's just take... Aha, uh -huh. you're just dragging actual, a little box around that. I'm just dra dragging a box there. Yep. I've made my selection. Let's now go to the Edit menu, mm -hmm. and we can select Cut, or we can select Copy. 
So let's choose copy. Right. And that will basically just take a copy of that image. Let's minimise paintbrush. And at this point, it's probably a good idea just to show how we currently have two applications running, but just minimised on my desktop. And in fact, we can see the file names as well. You can see the file names, yes. So if I want to go back into Write, double-click using the mouse, yep. and there we are. Let's position my mouse around about there. Go to the Edit menu mm -hmm. and choose Paste. Oh, and there's your picture. Scroll up and there's the picture. So once you copy something, it's available to place elsewhere. Yes, and, and basically that image was sitting in an area known as the clipboard, which we will look at later. Sure. And we could then paste that image into any application, right. just using copying and pasting. Now, let's say that I want to change that image. All I need to do within the Windows environment is just double-click on that image. And now we have another window. Oh, paintbrush and picture. You can, that's right. You can see that basically we're still sitting within our right document, but mm -hmm. we've just loaded those paintbrush tools that uh, created this picture originally. And let's say that we now want to make a change. I'm going to go to the View menu and just zoom in on a particular piece of the picture, this one here, for example. Right. Okay. And we can Ooh. now see uh, that element of the picture um, by pixel which is uh, all of the dots that go to make up that bitmap. Okay. I'm just going to use the, uh, the roller tool here, mm -hmm. and I want to choose a colour from my palette. Um, let's choose perhaps this dark red colour, and then we can just... Um, let's change the white, shall we? Oh, you can just sort of flood that area? Yeah, so I could... Uh, let's perhaps do that piece perhaps as we well. We can see a change up there in that little yes. picture at the top. Yeah, so I'm... Redesigning the Windows You're logo. You're defacing it, basically. I am, yes. <laughs> Don't worry about copyright. We're not going to save the changes. No. This is purely for demonstration okay. purposes. Let's zoom out, and we can okay. see that... So the, uh, the change you made is just in that area? Yeah. Could you also work at this level? Um, yes, we could. Yes. So let's... So it's much, uh, much more fine out there, isn't much it? Much more fine. Oh, yeah. that's a good Whoops. one. Whoops. <laughs> Bit of a splash there. Yep. So now let's go back into our right document, go to the File menu, and it says exit and return to softvision.wri. And this message is saying, I've chosen to, to actually um, move to softvision.wri. Do mm -hmm. I want to update the, uh, the object, which is the, the picture? Yep. Yes, we do. And now if I deselect, you can see all right. that all of those changes that we made in Paintbrush have taken effect here within the right document. OK. And we're going to look at, at um, cutting and pasting and objects that we've alluded to already in right. much more detail, so, so don't worry too much about the terminology that you may not understand. Good. OK, let's minimise right, shall we? Yep. And what else are you going to show us, Jackie? OK, we're going to look finally at card files, Steve. As the name and the picture would suggest, it's just like the card file index system you may have on your desktop to store names and addresses and telephone numbers, etc. OK. So we can maximise card file. Click on the up arrow. On the up arrow. And our little and clock is still beavering away down yes, there. Yes, that's right. We, uh, we need to hurry up here. <laughs> and uh, yes, anyway... Well, coffee, coffee time is coming I know. up. In uh, true Blue Peter fashion, I prepared a couple of files earlier. So let's go and open up a file. Uh, I'm going to open up this one here, business.crd. And you've got a little new extension there. CRD is the extension, mm -hmm. that's right. Um, so let's say OK. And there's my... Hey, you've got me in there. Yes. Well, I thought I should at least put you in there, Steve. <laughs> Notice I've got myself as well. Um, <laughs> if I want to look at details of other people, yep. we can use the mouse here, and I may want to just click on my name, and there are my details with my phone number right. for people. Right. You're just clicking on to, the top of the card. Yes, on the top of the card. So let's click on that name there. Um, perhaps go to John Smith. OK. And you've got a few cards in the pile there? Yes, we've got a few cards in, in the pile there. Um, let's perhaps look at the various things you might want to do with these cards. First thing you might want to do is to add a new card. Mm. Go to the card menu here and select Add. I've chosen to put the surname in first and then the first name, so let's type in a, a new name here. Let's type in... Um, uh, we'll put a, an original name in here, shall we? Blogs Fred. and uh, Fred. Yep. Select OK. And I can now type in the details for, for uh -huh. Fred Bloggs. Let's say that he works at Microsoft as well. Make it nice and easy for me. Mm -hmm. OK. Et cetera, et cetera.
Okay, and you so can put any information on there you want? Oh, yes. I mean, I've, I've just restricted it to address, phone numbers, fax numbers, email yep. aliases, but you could put all sorts of information in there, yes. Indeed, graphics that we'll look mm. at a bit later on as well. What are these, uh, these two little arrows that we see? These allow me to actually um, flip through the cards. So we're currently looking um, at your card there, Soft yep. Vision. As I click, you can see they move mm -hmm. forward okay. in my list. If I select this particular card, you can see they're also moving there. Right. All right. So you can basically go ahead and add as many cards as you like. Yeah, we can add as many cards. We can delete cards. Uh, we may want to look at them in a list format rather than the card index format. Okay. okay. You can go back to card file. Uh, we might want to search for information. Oh, that's useful. We've got yeah. lots of cards. Yeah. I think. Yeah. If we say go to, um, let's say that we want to go to perhaps uh, the new card that we entered, blogs. Blogs, yes. So if I type in um, blogs mm -hmm. and click on OK, that brings blogs to the fore. So for go to, you're looking at the text at the top of the card, yes. the name. Now, the other thing I know you're going to say to me is um, how do we search for information? probably contained within the card itself can, rather than just the yes. index line. Can you do that? Yes, you can. And again, that's a, a very useful tool. Um, go to the find option. Find. Let's say that you want to, to search for a, a card and it's uh, perhaps a training company mm -hmm. and you don't remember the name of the company. Uh, we could just type in here any text that might appear within the card itself. Yep. And here you can select uh, the case. Let's say find next. Oh, right. And it's there you see found it's found a training company for us. Okay. Yeah. And it's uh, irrespective of case because you didn't choose match case. We didn't case. choose to select case. Now, um, the final thing I'd like to show here, we looked at cutting and pasting from paintbrush into write. Mm -hmm. We could also cut and paste graphics into our card file Can index. You really? We could. So let's just cancel from that for a second. Yep. And let's pretend that we want to create a logo for this particular training company. I'm sure they have one, but uh, <laughs> let, let's let our creative juices flow, shall well. we? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> okay, so if we uh, zoom out. And uh, just minimise card file. Let's go back into Paintbrush, so which is... You've got three running now. Yeah. Gosh, you can really do a lot of things oh, here. Oh, yes. Yes, we can. So let's open up Paintbrush. And uh, I want to create a blank sheet of paper. And at this point, Steve, I'm not going to be terribly creative. I'm actually going to use the circle here. OK. And I'm going to create a very simple logo with three circles. So... If we just draw a circle. I'm holding down the shift key, by the way. Are you? And the shift key enables me to draw a perfect shape, be it a circle, a square, or whatever. And let's add one more um, circle there. So you're choosing the colour from the colour uh, buttons at the bottom? Yes. And then holding the shift to give you a perfect shape? A shape, yep. OK. So let's now use my scissors, as before. Draw a little box around that. Select that. Go to the Edit menu. Say Copy. Mm -hmm. And let's minimise paintbrush, bring up card file, let's perhaps go down to here. Yeah. Now the one thing we need to do is to go to the uh, edit menu and instead of text, which is currently selected by the tick, choose picture. Okay. And having selected picture, we can paste that image in. Oh, there it is. And I could pick it up. And, and there's the new logo there. for this there's training There's the new company. logo, yeah. Okay, that's neat. Okay. So it's not just text you're storing on card files, you actually can, can have be graphics as well. So that, that as well. could be a logo or a photograph of somebody or whatever. Okay, well that's a fairly quick run through of some of the things you can do in yep. Windows, but yep. I know you're going to slow down a bit and explain yes. the steps involved throughout the rest of the video. Yes. But it does show that you can run more than one application at Oh, a absolutely. Time. And it's not unusual to go around an organisation and find lots of applications mm -hmm. minimised at the bottom of the desktop there and yep. people switching between those applications. Great. Yeah. Okay, well let's move on now and we'll have a look at the next topic. Yeah, great.